And hi and welcome from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. Welcome into our Baylor Coaches Show this evening. We're glad you're here. It's a night earlier than normal. Normally in the spring, we're on Thursday evenings. On Wednesday tonight, we've got baseball tomorrow night uh, as they will play Thursday, Friday, and Saturday ahead of the Easter holiday. But there is no perfect night to find uh, no conflicts. In fact, women's basketball with their bank banquet, season-ending banquet, is uh, going on right now in the Farrell Center. But we're glad uh, you folks are here at Rudy's, those of you watching, those of you are, that are listening tonight as well. we got a great hour planned for you. And we'll kick things off with Joey Scrivano, Baylor women's tennis coach. Joey, welcome to you. Thanks a lot, John. Always great to, to, to spend time with you and uh, do the show. We appreciate you very, very much. We are uh, down the home stretch now in your regular season. Yeah. One more regular season match Saturday against Texas, then it's on into the Big 12 tournament. Exactly, yeah. It's a big one against Texas, and, uh, yeah, then we have the postseason just around the corner. I is that kind of stating the obvious? It's a big one against Texas? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Well, <laughs> we, all we could all say that in any <laughs> sport, No, right? absolutely. <laughs> you know, I, I think the deal is uh, they're all big. Yeah. Every match yeah. is big. Yeah. You, know, you tell me which ones are the little ones, and, right. and uh, I'll prepare a little differently. So, no, they're all big. And, and of course, with Texas, uh, there's always that uh, extra emotional uh, component to it. And uh, we're excited, though. Very good. Let's talk about this past weekend. Two home matches uh, this past weekend, Kansas State on Friday, Kansas on Sunday. And uh, two good wins there yeah. for you. I mean, this was a really good weekend. Yeah, absolutely. You know, the the uh, the athletes really performed. You know, they they were present. They uh, accepted the challenge. You know, uh, Kansas State uh, is always a tough match. And uh, in in regards to Kansas, we played them earlier in the year. They were one of our first matches of the season. And to beat a top twenty five opponent two times uh, is not easy. Mm. You know, and and our players did a great job. Very good. Tell everybody uh, that wasn't there, like, all day on Sunday, uh, you had a men's match. or Was yours first or theirs we, we first? We were first. Yours was first. Yeah, thankfully. And you even started early. You <laughs> yes. started at 11 a.m. on Sunday. But, man, that was a full day of oh, tennis yeah, on Sunday. That, that was super Sunday of tennis. Yeah. <laughs> it was. Yeah, absolutely. No, it was uh, – the match was one of our longest matches in my tenure here at wow. Baylor. Wow. So it was uh, about a four-and-a-half-hour four match. Golly. So, yeah, you, you definitely wanted to bring a Snickers bar with you. <laughs> and, and, and be ready for a long day, but it was it was really good. And what was it? Just uh, very competitive? Yeah. yeah what was it that stretched it out? You know, it was a top 25 matchup, and both teams uh, were incredibly deep, um, and every match came down on the wire. You know, tennis, the margins are, are very small anyway, so um, – so, you know, every match you play, there's not a big difference between a win and a loss. But in that match in particular, uh, just every matchup was so, so tight. And, and sometimes that happens. So yeah. I'm, well, gl I'm glad we were on the right side of exactly. it. Exactly. Yeah. If you're going to play four and a half hours, yeah, you want to come oh away gosh. with the no, win. I don't think those Kansas coach coaches slept at all. Oh, that that's night. tough. Yeah, so, no, it's, it's, I'm good and happy for them. And you know? the, yeah, <laughs> right. Uh, and we're happy for you. That was a 4-3 match on Sunday, wasn't it? Was exactly. That four three? Yeah, it was a four three. Yeah, yeah. it came down to uh, Paula's last. Uh, she was the last match on, last set, and uh, she actually lost to that player in the past. Mm. So that was a big mental uh, victory for her. You yeah, know, she really gained a lot of confidence from overcoming that challenge. Tell everybody uh, that's here. Tell our listeners, our viewers. We always want to remind them, you know, if folks' uh, opinion of tennis is Wimbledon, mm -hmm. they're way off. I mean, yeah. it, it's just that's that's 180 degrees different mm -hmm. than college tennis and the mm -hmm. atmosphere in collegiate tennis. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Wimbledon is uh, it's just a really special event, and it's uh, you know it's it, it's based in London, so it's very prim and proper. <laughs> um, and that's great. That is definitely a part of our sport. But college tennis is, uh, you know, you get the spirit of, of collegiate athletics, which is, you know, young people just going out there and giving their best. And uh, and the fans are can be spirited as well. Yeah. And, and uh, we love that. That's that's what makes college tennis special is that the fans can get into it. You want them to be spirited. I mean, oh, you want a home sure. court advantage, don't you? 100%. We yeah. want it to be like a basketball game. Yeah, yeah, so, that's great. Yeah. So uh, if you're ever considering, and here's an opportunity uh, this week, Saturday, Baylor and Texas, women's yeah. tennis Saturday at 2, 
if you're considering it, maybe I'll go out there. We'll come on out and be ready to be loud yeah. and cheer and make noise and oh. try to distract the opponent. There, there's a line. I mean, there's a line oh, you yeah. can't cross, but yeah. you can try to distract the opponent. It's amazing what you can <laughs> do when you just really cheer for Baylor uh, in, in, in the most enthusiastic way. It, it does have an effect on the opponent. Right. So we don't need to heckle Texas. We just need to really cheer our kids on. I like that. Positive instead of uh, going negative. Where, where are some of the toughest places you go, like some of the toughest environments Boy. on the road? Uh, well, gosh, there's a lot of places. And, and tennis is challenging because there's different court surfaces. Yeah. And, and this year we played in Colorado, which was, uh, you know, a former Big 12 school. And the we were playing at over 5,000 feet. Ugh. So the altitude and, you know, their, their few fans that they had there – that made it a really uh, interesting cocktail of, uh, of, of challenges. But, uh, no, they're, you know, all, all, all the schools in Texas, I would say, have really good spirited fan bases, and, right. and they're not easy places to play. Yeah. Are we right there? I mean, with our home environment, are we right there with everybody else? We're getting there. You know, our fans okay. are too nice. You know, <laughs> that, uh, no, our, that's good. No, no, but, uh, no, our Baylor fans are amazing. They, they just support the kids, and they uh, – what I appreciate is they're they're just the sportsmanship is incredibly um, you know in, in the, it, our hearts are in the right place. We have great sportsmanship and we do things the right way. So uh, this is a place that um, just supports our student athletes and and that's what matters. That's good. And we're not encouraging anyone to just go crazy out there and berate the opponent. We don't want that. <laughs> we just want you cheering for Baylor yes. and making noise and being loud and. Make, doing that part to make it a great home court yeah, advantage. Exactly. Yeah, this this Saturday is a great time. If you've never been to a match before, <laughs> it's a great time to come out, and uh, it's going to be a good one. So this past weekend, uh, wins over Kansas State and Kansas. If I remember right, these weren't the exact ideal weather conditions this mm. weekend, were they? No, it was a little windy. Uh, yeah, <laughs> that's putting it mildly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it was a little windy, and that's, yeah, just a part of the game. You know, you got to deal with uh, those conditions, and uh, – our players really handled it well. Um, I, was, I was incredibly proud of them. It's not easy to play in the wind. How do you battle that? Is it a yeah. mental thing as much yeah. as a physical thing? It's 100% a mental yeah. thing. Okay. Yeah. It's it's just keeping your perspective and, and not uh, allowing, you know, the conditions to change your your decisions on the court. Okay. And, and just, you know, making sure you, you go out there and still have gratitude when you compete and you know, there's worse things in the world than playing a tennis match in the wind. And <laughs> when you can get your athletes just to, to get back to, hey, this is fun. I'm going to make mistakes. You know, it's not going to be perfect. Uh, but I'm going to handle it uh, in the best way. Then it, usually the performance ends up being pretty good. That's good. Are, do we have an advantage that we play under? I mean, practice under those conditions a lot. I mean, but I'm thinking yeah. Lubbock, Texas, uh, Texas yeah. Tech. Uh, you know, TCU, schools like that, probably, you know, practice in the wind a lot yeah. themselves. Yeah, I think we're all in the same boat. Um, you know, we, we, we have to deal with wind in Texas, and especially in the spring. Uh, I would say with our team, we try to, you know, not just go indoors on, in those situations. So, yeah. um, and, and I think those decisions to kind of tough it out during – during the season in practice uh, really help you on the match days. I got you. I mean, it'd be easy to go inside oh, when, yeah. you know, it's ideal conditions, but, you know, you're going to have to play in this type exactly. thing outdoors, so just yeah. stay out and practice in it. Yeah, and that's how you work your mental game is yeah. you got you got to deal with uh, adversity. And uh, and so what's great about those windy days, even today we had it. We just finished practice, yeah. and, and we had to deal with that. And, and what's great about that, um, you don't have to really coach, hey, you got to deal with some tough stuff. I mean, they're dealing with it. And, right. And uh, right. you just kind of get out of the way and let them kind of work their mental game. And we're talking about wind right now, but it wasn't too long ago, a couple of weeks ago, I mean, you were battling some cold weather oh. and, you know, probably yeah. some some moisture sometimes also. Yeah. So there's yeah. a lot of things you oh, have to yeah. battle through weather-wise. Absolutely. That's that's what's great about Texas, you know. You, in, 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 in a month, you can get all four seasons. So. <laughs> that's right, in one yeah. month. Yeah. Very good. All right, we're off and running on the Baylor Coaches Show. We're live at Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. We're glad you're with us this evening. We'll take a break and be right back. Thanks to Rudy's, Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. Joey Scrivano, our first guest tonight, Baylor women's tennis coach, and we'll be right back after this.
Right back with us live from Rudy's on our Baylor Coaches Show this evening. Glad you're with us. Coach Joey Scrivano in his 20th season as head coach at Baylor. Our first guest coming up this evening. And uh, we may have a couple of other guests coming to join oh. you. Nico and Luca. Come on up here, boy. guys. There you go. That's my big So those of you watching on television, you see him come on up here. I like that. Oh, all right. You know, we talk about the Baylor family. This is the Baylor family right here. I love it. That's you right, can stay right. as long as you want to, okay? <laughs> In fact, you can have my headset if you would like. But we'll continue with uh, with Joey Scrivano. Tell us about your team. you got three seniors. Talk yeah. about them. We'll recognize them on Senior Day on Saturday. Yeah, no, we have a gr an incredible group of uh, young ladies. Um, this team's uh, had a great season so far, and, uh, you know, all of our, our goals are still on the table. So it's really exciting to, to be at this stage of the season with this group. Um, they've just been a pleasure to coach. And, and uh, the three seniors, Mel, Allie, and Polly, uh, we've gone through so – through so much, you know, th these uh, past few years, and uh, they've just handled things so graciously and uh, have, have come through uh, with flying colors. So I'm just really proud of them and, and uh, excited to, to, to finish strong with them. That's great. You were reminding me in the hallway uh, the other day that the two of these were, I mean, they had a, a rocky start, yeah. you know, no, no fault of their no. own, but just a rough start getting yeah. going in college. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, back in uh, 2019, all three of them came in the spring of 2019, and uh, Mel and Allie, um, due to the NCAA rules, had to sit out a season, mm. which, uh, you know, as an athlete, that's, that's incredibly hard to do is just to sit and watch your, your team uh, perform and uh, but they handled that very well. They put their heads down and just kept working and, and knew that their time was going to come. And uh, and now it's, you know, it's it's been here and they've done incredible. Wow, that's great. Yeah. It's a real success story, what they've had to overcome during their time here. Uh, Mel and Allie, uh, right now number four in, in the nation as a doubles team. Yeah. They have been as high as number one nationally. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's a great that's Incredible. a great doubles duo there. Yeah. I mean, when you think about all the, the teams in college tennis, I mean, there's, you know, about a 1,000 uh, doubles teams out there. For them to be number one or top five, it just uh, says so much to, to their work ethic and their ability to go out there and, and perform. Uh, yeah, just uh, I'm, I'm so proud of them. That's great. Hey, is that pretty comforting to know when you go out to play doubles? I mean, you got uh, as, as sure a point right there. Yeah. It, although it's not a point. I mean, it's just part of the doubles. Yeah. But uh, as sure a success That's right. doubles team right there as anybody could yeah, have. Yeah, absolutely. Well, they, they – uh, what's incredible about them is they've, they haven't just dominated the matches, huh. you know, and, and that's tennis too. It's, it's a sport of small margins, like I said. But they just compete so well, and uh, they just perform. So they've been down in many matches this spring, like 4-1. You know, wow. five two match points down, and wow. they just keep competing and finding ways to to win, and uh, that's what makes them great is their their competitive spirit. That is great. That uh, line of questioning brings us to our first uh, first place foods. Ask the coach question of the night. It's brought to you by First Place Foods. That's a darn good pickle. And the question is from Jonathan. Where's Jonathan? Who has the, had this question? Right over there. J looks like a tennis player himself, Jonathan. He says, with uh, Alicia and Mel ranking number four in ITA doubles, tell us what goes into the ranking process. Good yeah. question. That's a great question. Um, <laughs> I should know what goes into the ranking process. Well, you know, just to, in simple terms, I mean, the more you win, the, sure, the, the higher right, you're going to be right. ranked. But, uh, <laughs> but I can speak on, you know, what goes into uh, – to their success and, and just helping them, um, you know, reach their potential. It, it, you know, doubles is, is a really, it's more of a complex game than singles because you have two people yeah. and then you have this team. So it's really coaching three people. You have, you know, the, the deuce player, the ad player, and then you have the doubles team collectively. So um, to, to really get them to, to gel together, um, put their games uh, together in a, where they complement each other and then just making sure that they can just perform and not get hung up on judging, mm -hmm. hey, you know, you played terrible that day or <laughs> I did. or It's just getting them to just stay present and uh, just 
you know, be very optimistic and positive. It's it's really hard. It's much harder than singles, yeah. actually. Wow. Huh. Yeah, How about there's that? way more that goes into doubles than singles. All right, good question, Jonathan. Thank you very much. First Place Foods, ask the coach. First Place Foods, that's a darn good pickle. Uh, I, I should remember this about you, but I don't. Are you one who puts a lot of emphasis on the doubles and the doubles point or one that that's just one point, let's don't overemphasize it? Another great question. <laughs> uh, it, it really depends on, on your team. You know, there's there's okay. been some years where I've uh, not de-emphasized the doubles. Okay. And, and that was just because we didn't have a team that, that was a strong serving team. So if you don't have a strong serving team, to really spend a lot of time on doubles, mm. uh, it's just counterproductive. Mm. So uh, with this group, you know, they serve extremely well. Mm. Um, and uh, they play the net well. So for us to not put that emphasis wouldn't, wouldn't, be, uh, wouldn't serve our team well. So we're really uh, focused on doubles and – we don't make it, you know, hey, we have to win the doubles point. We just we just put the emphasis on, hey, it's another point, but just like every point, we want to be present yeah. and and, uh, and allow confidence to overcome fear. So let's go after it, you know. Really good. So senior day on Saturday, 2 o'clock versus Texas. What do you have planned for uh, senior day recognition? Yeah, we're, we're going to have a really cool ceremony after the match uh -huh. to honor our, our amazing seniors. And uh, But, uh, you know, as importantly, we, we want to make sure we play well and we compete well. So uh, senior day is going to be a lot of fun, win or lose, but we definitely want to do everything we can to influence the results. I and, hear that. Uh, and, and this week has been a great week of preparation so far, and we got to just keep going. Speaking of recognition, uh, you had a very nice recognition on Friday. Uh, it was between your match and, uh, and the men's match on Friday uh, for Betty Bryant, who, who yeah. folks who've been around for a while, while know Betty, appreciate her. Such a, a Baylor supporter and wow. Baylor fan, but tennis primarily. Mm -hmm. I mean, she was, uh, you know, as, as big and um, uh, loyal a tennis fan as I've known in my yeah. time here. Yeah, yeah, I and agree. She, she passed away, I should say that, but you recognized her yes. on Friday. Yeah, she was a former uh, Baylor women's tennis player, and uh, actually, I think for a short stint, she even played on the men's team, she told me. <laughs> so she, Betty was just an incredible uh, person and, and came to every match uh, and would even travel sometimes to matches. And, and uh, her, her uh, awesome husband, Wendell, uh, he, she would drag him along. You know, he's an Aggie, <laughs> but he had to cheer for the Bears. And uh, and uh, her son Mark works at Baylor. He works. Uh, he's the head of the international students' office, huh. so he knows a lot of our athletes as well. But they're just a tremendous family. They've been so good to us, and uh, w w it was an honor just to to, to to give her that recognition. That's very yeah. nice. Very nice. And. Uh, Gosh, she was a diehard fan. Oh, she really man. was for so many years. Yeah. And uh, you just her enthusiasm oh. was infectious, wasn't it? It was amazing. And, and it, you know, win or lose, uh, she was very positive. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, when you would get the, uh, the, uh, the poppy seed, lemon poppy seed cake, I mean, you knew, okay, we did, we did something right, <laughs> you know. Uh, and, uh, no, she's just an incredible supporter, and, and we miss her already. You know, I, I would love – uh, on match day, I'd always look for where she was sitting. Um, she was sort of like a security blanket for me mm. for, for the past two decades. So uh, we miss her already, but uh, her spirit, you know, lives on in our program. Yeah, well, we share the loss of Betty Bryant and uh, just appreciate her spirit uh, and her support of Baylor University and Baylor Tennis. We'll take a break. We'll be back with more in just a moment. We'll uh, look at what's ahead. We told you Baylor in Texas on Saturday. Big 12s are coming up next week. We'll talk about that with Coach Scrivano and more coming up. It's the Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's, and we'll be right back after this.
Back on our Baylor Coaches Show, live from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. It is time now for our Baylor Scott and White, Southwest Sports Medicine and Orthopedics Health Tip of the Week. Don't let pain slow you down. We diagnose and treat sports-related injuries and provide orthopedic services for athletes and non-athletes alike. Visit a Baylor Scott and White Sports Medicine and Orthopedic Specialist and move like you used to. And as we continue with Joey Scrivano, Baylor women's tennis coach, uh, it's Texas, as we mentioned, this week. Uh, and you're ranked number 21 in the poll that just came out today. Yes. Where is uh, Texas in the poll? Uh, I, I think they're in the top five Are somewhere. Are they number yeah. four? Did they're, I see yeah, that? Yeah, they may be four. Right. That's right. Yeah, All right. yeah That's I good. Think, I think right now it's uh, OU's two, A&M's three, and Texas is four. So oh, wow. the old Big 12 uh, yeah, is how about representing. That? Yeah. That's great. And you're yeah. sitting at number 21 going in, so that match will close the regular season. We talked about senior day. But then the Big 12 tournament is uh, next week up in Fort Worth. Yes, yeah, we're really excited about that. Um, you know, that's something we've been working towards all year, preparing, and uh, the team's ready to go. I mean, they're, they want to get the postseason started and, and get after it. So that is uh, nice and close. Fans yes. could drive to Fort Worth, you know, That's and right. catch your matches up there. Absolutely, yeah. It's, it's you know, everybody knows the drive. It's an easy drive. And, <laughs> and then our fans that are in, in the Fort Worth area, Dallas-Fort Worth area, they need to come out and support. And uh, it, it really does make a difference. Our athletes feel it, and uh, it, it can impact the match for sure. Are we, Baylor, in the rotation to host the Big 12? Does that kind of rotate regularly? Yes, we're in the rotation. We, we hosted last year, yep. um, so, uh, you know, our time will come in the next, you know, couple years or so. And Nationals are uh, coming back. Is that 25? Is that right? Yes, that, obviously a huge deal for yeah, us to, yeah. to host the, the, the big dance. Um, but, yeah, that will be in 2025. And, uh, yeah, we, you know, in, in the, the core of this team, will be playing in, in that in yeah. that 25 championship. So uh, we're excited about the, the group we have and, and, and the, the direction we're heading, you know. Good. Is there – are you in position, you think, um, to host NCAA first and second rounds this year? We need to uh, win on Saturday. Okay. And then okay. – uh, and probably another win or two in the tournament, and okay. I think that's uh, definitely a possibility. Gotcha, yeah. gotcha. So yeah. some work to do there. We have some work to do, but yeah. it's it's there. I mean, the opportunities are there, and that's all you can ask for. Good. You know? This is, uh, I mean, we're talking about those rankings. Man, this is a killer conference, isn't yeah, it, in it women's is. tennis? Yeah, it's it's one of the toughest uh, out there, and and I think that it's got the best coaches. Uh, the coaches from top to bo bottom are just so prepared, and they're really into it, and um, yeah, it's a tough league. The margins are small, like I said before, and uh, it's a 4-3 league. That's where it's become mm, now. Yeah. So every match comes down to the wire. Yeah, that's a good description, a 4-3 league. Yeah. I know what you mean by that. So Texas on Saturday, we look forward to that, 2 o'clock uh, at, uh, at the Herd Tennis Center outside. Um, and your facilities here, I mean, I, I think it sort of goes without saying, but we like to say it. We've got great facilities yeah. here, you know, with the Hawkins oh. indoor and the Herd outdoor. Um, you're in great shape facility-wise. Oh, absolutely, yeah. We have the best facilities in college tennis, mm -hmm. hands down. Um, between yeah. the, the Herd, uh, you know, uh, tennis center and then the Hawkins indoor tennis center, uh, it's pretty amazing. You know, we're, we're very fortunate for sure. That's great. Is there anything, I know there's always a wish list. Coaches always yeah. have a, a wish list, you know, of yeah. things they'd like to see done, improved, added on. Is there anything yeah. top of mind for you there? Yeah, you know, of course, with, with the facilities, you have to keep updating them and sure. making sure that, uh, you know, that you stay on top. So, you know, with our, uh, with our facilities, you know, the, the court surface is a big deal, and that's something that uh, – you know we've we've had some challenges with over the years uh so we we got to find a way to to get the court surface where it's stable and mm. we know that it, uh it, it'll last for the long term um and then just you know locker room we're doing uh we're in the middle of a locker room renovation right now we're raising uh, uh some some funds for that um we just want the student athlete experience to be the best in the country and in order to do that you want to make sure that you know they they're in an environment that's inspiring and motivating and 
and we've done that at Baylor for in all our sports. We have incredible facilities. It's just a matter of, of keeping them up to that standard. That's great. Are there innovations? I mean, does it can continue to involve like court services, things like that? Yeah. Is that just a constant, you know, keep up and get yes. the latest and greatest? Absolutely, yeah. yeah. There, there's better materials out there, and uh, there's materials that are more uh, athlete friendly. Mm. Um, you know, tennis is a grueling sport. Uh, you know, it's the best athletes in, in the world play tennis. I know I'm a little biased, but but I it, it is a really challenging sport, and we really got to make sure that we're providing uh, the best support for our athletes and, and you know that goes from court surface to uh, strength and conditioning to athletic training we, we just got to provide the best experience in the country and, and we're working towards that Mac knows that and and he's a hundred percent behind it and uh, we've we've made some really good strides there we just got to keep going great well, keep up the good work. Good luck against Texas on Saturday. Senior day, Saturday, 2 o'clock at the Herd Tennis Center. And uh, that will close the regular season. Then on to the Big 12 tournament next week up in Fort Worth, hosted by TCU. Joey Scrivano, our first guest tonight. Baylor Women's Tennis, we appreciate you being Thank you. here. Thanks very much. Thanks, my man. Good luck. Thank you. All right, thanks very much. We'll take a break. Be back with more in just a moment. We'll switch out. Jay Goble will join us when we come back. Talk Baylor Women's Golf. We've got that when we come back on the Baylor Coaches Show, live from Rudy's, and we'll return right after this. As we continue on the Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's on the Circle in Waco, thanks to our host here at Rudy's, Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. Switch gears here, bottom of the hour, and join me in welcoming in Baylor women's golf coach Jay Goble joins us next. Thanks for Welcome having me, John. to you. We appreciate, appreciate it. it. Absolutely. I need to thank you. You uh, gave us lots of good subject matter by winning a <laughs> tournament yesterday. Yes. Congratulations yes. on Absolutely. that. Absolutely. That was a lot of fun. Fantastic. The Buzzy Challenge. Bruzzy. Oh, Bruzzy. Bruzzy. You know, I thought it was Bruzzy, and this right here says Buzzy. So, I'm um, sorry. The Bruzzy Challenge. Hosted by the University of North Texas. Yes. Congratulations. You Thank not you. only won it, you nearly lapped the field. You won by 12 strokes. We did. We had a 12-shot lead and, uh, or excuse me, a 15-shot lead going into the last day. And, uh, you know, it's been a typical uh, windy <laughs> spring day in Texas. Yes. And uh, we ended up uh, holding off for a 12-shot win. Wow. That's yeah. terrific. Yeah. And uh, we talked about this with Coach Gravano, the weather in Texas and really anywhere you go, but in the spring in Texas especially, that's a challenge, isn't it? 
I think it is, and, it, you know, I, I do love the fact that we get to play in it every day. So, um, you know, I, I hope it's windy. Like, when we go really? places, I hope it's windy. Uh, I hope the conditions are tough. I feel like our team, because we practice in and play in it so much, it, yeah. it doesn't really affect us quite as much as everybody else. And uh, it was definitely challenging. We had a rain delay. We were out there Monday for 14 hours oh, playing man, 36 right? holes. <laughs> And then uh, yesterday the wind continued, had a little bit of weather there too. So it was, it was an interesting day, but uh, or, or tournament, I guess. But man, they played great. And, Sounds like. And they're, uh, I think they're they're really hitting their stride, moving into postseason, which starts next week. Yeah, that's what you want, right? Play Absolutely. Play your best golf late in the Absolutely. year. Absolutely. Just continue the upward climb. Correct. So the first round, first two rounds actually were Monday. Was the rain delay before you started? Was it in the middle of the round? In was, the middle. It late? was it right in the middle? <laughs> yeah, we played six holes, uh -huh. went inside for an hour and a half or so, came back out, and then, again, played the rest of the day literally until dark. Golly, and how then, tough is uh, that? It's, it's tough. You know, we don't do that very often. We don't play those 36-hole days yeah. as much anymore um, because they are so tough. It's, it's more of an endurance thing than it is a golf at a certain point. But they did it. Yeah. I mean, again, they came out with a 15-shot lead after the first day. Um, we we kind of lapped the field in the second round. We shot uh, 14 under par in the second round. Gosh. And something that I've never seen before from any of my teams is we had six eagles in one round. I was going to ask you about yeah. that. Six yeah. eagles in one round. In one round. That's amazing. I mean, we sometimes we don't have six eagles in a whole year. Right. And uh, we had six in one round, and one player on my team had back-to-back -back eagles. Golly. Yeah. How rare is that? Uh, I've never done it before. I've yeah. played golf my whole life. Yeah. yeah. So, uh, Do we need to change your name from the Baylor Bears to the Baylor Eagles? I don't know. <laughs> but the, I mean, it was impressive. I, I hadn't seen uh, – you know, on, on our scoring, they put uh, eagles in yellow. Okay. Uh, birdies are in red, scoring, and then eagles are in yellow, and there's lots of yellow on there. Wow. <laughs> it, was, it was nuts. Now, was it just your team that was eagle crazy? Yeah. Or were other teams doing the same thing? Yeah, no. In, in fact, your... the Oklahoma State coach came up to me at one point. He said, "Is your are your scores <laughs> correct online? <laughs> like, yep, they are. <laughs> yes, they are. <laughs> That's great. Uh, so Oklahoma State was there. Really, every other team, it was kind of a Big 12 preview, wasn't it, with all the teams there? I think, uh, yeah, I think every Big 12 team was there. Yeah. So, um, yeah, uh, TCU was in second place. Uh, we beat them by 12. Uh, Texas was there. Oklahoma State, who are both top 10 in the country. So we beat them by more than 12, yeah. which is great. That's great. Well, what a yeah. great tournament. Congratulations on that. Your uh, 19th team title as the head coach at Baylor. And the Bruzzy has been good for you. Uh, yeah, good we won it before. Yeah. yeah, you won it in 2019. Yes, so you're two for two playing two up there. Two for two. That is nice. Yes. What uh, What was that course like? How tough was it? Uh, the course was, uh, was really challenging. Again, I think the wind made it even more challenging because there's – it's called water chase and – the water kind of chased us around the hole. Really? <laughs> yeah, a lot of water? Water on every hole, yeah. it seemed like. So, um, again, you know, playing in the wind as much as we do here in Texas, like it, it's not as tough when you figure out what kind of shot you can hit. But, um, yeah, it was it was a challenging place and, and throw in the wind. And it was – the downwind holes were, were kind of easy, mm -hmm. but then the end of the wind holes mm -hmm. were twice as hard as they would normally mm -hmm. be. Yeah. So. You just had to adjust. Very good. Yeah. So is this, like you said, maybe playing your best golf right now, end of the regular season? Is that momentum, you know, that can carry you and jettison you right into the postseason? I believe so. Uh, we played really well at Arizona State a couple weeks ago. We uh, we actually tied Stanford, uh, uh, who's the number one team in the country. So we tied them for the week, ended up finishing third in the event, and then uh, obviously winning this week. I mean, we're, we're trending the right way. And yeah. We've played good golf all year. Um, I wouldn't say that we've played it all at the same time. We've had one or two.
And you're back with us on the Baylor Coaches Show live from Rudy's this evening. Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. Coach Jay Goble, our guest, up till the top of the hour, talking Baylor women's golf. Baylor coming off a win in the Bruzzy Challenge in Fort Worth uh, the last couple of days. Great timing. You win a tournament, you come here with us. We really yeah. appreciate yeah, that. Yeah, it worked out well. Very That's well. That's the way we planned. Thank you very much. I couldn't have uh, asked for any more. You were talking about some of your uh, players, individuals. Let's talk about uh, some of them that uh, sure. won the championship. Gurleen Kaur having another outstanding season. Yeah, she, she actually probably is saving her best for last. She's having her best season so far. Um, she is already our career scoring average, low scoring average for Baylor. Uh, I think she's going to break that again this year. Wow. The way, yeah, she played great last week, finished second um, yesterday, nine under par for three days. So she's playing really good golf. And I think that, you know, she really wants to end her Baylor career on a super high note. Mm. So she's working really hard. Um, going to turn professional after uh, after nationals this year, and man, she's she's ready to go. She's ready. She's ready to she's go. She's ready. Would have won this tournament. Uh, she finished second, but the TCU girl finished uh, shot a nine under sixty three. Bogey free. Good grief, a sixty three yeah. to beat her by two. So yeah, it was awesome. That's what yeah. it took to keep Gerline from being Correct. the individual medalist. Correct. So it was uh, a couple of weeks ago, wasn't it, or maybe longer than that when. We thought Gerlein was going to go to uh, Augusta and play in the Augusta, what was it? The Augusta Women's Am, yep, yep. Augusta National Women's Am, and she ended up getting a last-minute invitation to the Chevron Championship, uh, formerly called the Dinah Shore, which oh, okay. is an LPGA yeah. tour major. Rancho Mirage, California? Rancho Mirage, very right. nice. So, uh, so here she has this option, Augusta mm. Pro Tour. <laughs> right. That's a tough choice, isn't it? It's a tough choice. I think um, she did play in the Augusta National Women's Am last year, yeah. so I think it made the choice a little bit easier knowing that she played in the U.S. Open last year, made the cut in the U.S. Open, um, and, and she told me, she was like, you know, I learned so much playing in a professional golf event that – I want more of that. Mm. And, you know, I want to be a professional golfer. I know that my career after Baylor is going to be playing professional golf. So if I get invited as an, an amateur, I mean, there's a lot of players who are fully exempt on the LPGA Tour that don't get invited yeah. to the Dinah Shore so, or the Chevron Championship, yeah. excuse me. So I think uh, for her it was, it, you know, it became an easy choice knowing that she wanted to play professional golf after this and have another shot at, you know, stacking her game up against the best players in the world. Gotcha. Makes sense when you yeah. look at it that way. I mean, that's a very level-headed choice. You're looking at her future, you right. know, go play that pro event. That's a great opportunity to go there. Yeah, and the, the practice round, she's playing with Stacy Lewis, former champion and number mm -hmm. one player in the world. She's playing with current number one player in the world, Jin Young Ko, in a practice round. You can't, you can't beat that. Yeah. I mean, Augusta National is an amazing place, and it's amazing that they run this tournament. Uh, but, but again, you don't get those opportunities often as an amateur to go play on the biggest stage in women's golf, and that's what the LPGA Tour major is. So uh, that's Gerline. Uh, great career, great senior season. And uh, tell us about some of your other uh, your other top players that helped you win this Brezzy Challenge. Sure. Um, next, Addie Baggerly, who transferred in from Florida. She's only actually a one-semester player for us. Mm -hmm. So she's only here this semester, and she's here to help us win championships. That's what she wants. Uh, she is also wanting to be uh, a college golf coach. So next year she is going to be our volunteer assistant while she – finishes up her grad degree. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Very good. Uh, besides that, we have Rosie Belsham, who's from England. Uh, her grandparents flew out from England to watch her play this weekend. Wow. Apparently, they only show up, like every time they show up, she wins or her team wins. Wow. So I was asking them in the parking lot yesterday if they could stay for two more yeah, weeks. exactly. And just make sure we get through uh, our next event in Houston. But um, Can you come back? <laughs> Rosie is a sophomore. She's She's been fantastic her whole two years that she's been here. She's played in every tournament. So she's done a great job. Uh, Britta Snyder is, was also in the lineup this week. Who She finished ninth. Um, she's also a sophomore who's played in every tournament. So – you know, those those two players, Rosie and Britta, they've been here two years. We've played in 15 tournaments. We've won eight of them wow. with them. So wow. they've had a, a really good start to their Baylor career so say. far. And then Antonia Mate from uh, Santiago, Chile. 
She's a freshman. I mean, she she just gets it done. Shot a 71 yesterday to and finished with a birdie to help kind of move a, move our lead a little bit bigger. Uh, she's done a great job. She works really hard on a game and. Uh, she's really fun to coach and watch. Wow, that's terrific. Yeah. Got a couple questions from the audience. Sure. You good for these? All right, this is our first place foods. Ask the coach. First place foods, that's a darn good pickle. First question is from Cody. Where is Cody in the room? Right there. All right, uh, Mr. Soto says, how much uh, confidence does a tournament title win give your team this close to the postseason? I think it gives them tremendous confidence. I think going into the postseason with a win and – Again, playing uh, just a couple weeks ago in Arizona and tying the number one team in the country. We, we, we all know that we're moving in the right direction. We talk about it a lot. You know, we, again, we're trying to get just a little bit better every day moving into the end of the year, and, and we've been doing that. And uh, you can see through their, their desire to get better, through their work ethic, through their scores, that, again, we're moving towards postseason full throttle. Very nice. All right, very yeah. good. Cody, thank you very much. Here's a question from Derek, and Derek says, this should be interesting, what is your most <laughs> memorable recruiting visit? Good my question. Most, yeah, my most memorable recruiting visit was probably my first one for Baylor. Uh, I literally dropped my, my wife and my son off in Waco and hopped on a plane to Scotland <laughs> uh, because I really just had to get this player who was playing in the Women's British Open at Carnoustie. So I fly from Waco to Dallas, Dallas to Edinburgh, drive a couple hours to Carnoustie wow. and watch uh, Lauren Taylor, who played for me only for one year, but during her one year, she won the uh, Big 12 championship. Yeah. So I watched her play in the British at Carnoustie, and then I snuck around in at the old course after Ooh, that. Oh, nice. That very nice. Good. It's a pretty memorable trip. It was very memorable. <laughs> yeah. That's very good. Good questions. Thank you very much. That's our first place food to ask the coach. First place foods, that's a darn good pickle. Let's take a break. We'll be back with more with Coach Jay Goebel talking Baylor women's golf. We are live at Rudy's on the Circle in Waco. Rudy's Real Texas Barbecue. Stay with us. We'll return right after this. Final segment with Coach Jay Goble tonight on the Baylor Coaches Show. We appreciate everyone that is here at Rudy's. Those of you uh, watching, those of you listening, got some family out there, Coach. Yeah, they're welcome out there. to y'all. We appreciate you being here. Great to see you, part of the uh, the Baylor family and your family as well. One one thing you have done um, over the last few weeks, I think, there was that horrific um, uh, truck van crash out in West Texas. 
uh, the University of the Southwest yes. uh, golf team. Uh, several members of that team died in that crash. You've you've honored them in several ways. Yeah, we've uh, we've been traveling and and hanging a hat on our bag of the University of the Southwest just in in like remembrance of them. I've also been wearing a ribbon every day hmm. on my hat. Um, you know, I think that everybody, I know everybody in college athletics has been in the van, been tired, been traveling. Um, we've all been in the situation that, that these players and, and their coach were in. And it's, it's, it's really uh, very sad and yeah. heart-wrenching for us. Just because, again, as a coach and as a member of a golf team before, how many hours have we been sure. in the van? Oh, how, many, yeah. how many hours have we been driving and in the van and it's dark and, and you know, anything can happen. Um, it's, it's extremely sad. And we, we also wrote a lot of letters to the, uh, to the other teammates that, that did, uh, that were not in the crash. Uh, I can't imagine how any of them are getting through that. You know, uh, we're just sending our, our prayers and thoughts and, and just, just to kind of make sure that they know that we're thinking about them because nice. again, yeah, I, I just, you know, it's every coach's, like, worst nightmare. Yeah, it hits obviously. close to home. Very close to home. It hits really close to home. Yeah, wow, very good. Got another question from uh, Steve Van Wagner. Steve is right there. He says, what's the uh, what's the girl's name that is Baylor's number one player? So, Gerline Kaur is our number one player. She's from uh, Cyprus, Texas. Uh, she has – this is her fifth year, so she's back for uh, a COVID year. Um, again, I think she has the best scoring average in Baylor women's golf history. It's about 71.8, something like that. I don't know exactly, Matt, but it's pretty close to that. So, <laughs> And uh, her single season uh, scoring average so far this year is right around 71, which is amazing. Yep, very good. Gerline Core. It's her name. You'll 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 be seeing her name on the yeah, uh, LPGA it. Tour you real will. shortly, you like will. maybe next year. So that'll be fun to watch. Big 12s are uh, coming up uh, April 22nd through the 24th at the Golf Club at Houston Oaks. Uh, yes. What uh, what are you looking forward to there? It's a great golf course. Uh, I know that our uh, you know it has good Baylor vibes around it. Our men's golf team has won two, uh, I think, two of the last four uh, Big 12 match play events out there so they hold their big 12 match play event out there in october uh this will be our first time holding ho holding the big 12 uh championship there it's a great course we played there last year a couple times in practice i think that you know it, it feels like home cooking to us it's same kind of greens that we're used to same kind of grass uh beautiful oak trees around the golf course very similar to what we play here in waco at ridgewood so it's a good place, and I, again, I think we're moving in the right direction as far as how the team's playing. So they like it; they feel comfortable there. It's only two hours down the road, so it's uh, you know we're probably going to get some of this Texas wind, which I hope it <laughs> I hope it just pumps the whole week, and then right. uh, and then yeah, looking forward to the week. I think we're I think we're close to being ready to go. Man, that's great! I can't wait. That's going to be fun. April twenty second through the twenty fourth at the golf club at Houston Oaks which you say is actually in Hockley, Hockley Texas. Texas. Hockley, <laughs> it is not in Houston. <laughs> right. So good luck there. That is right around the corner. And what a great uh, what a great season you are having and coming off the win in the Bruzzy Challenge. That is Thanks. great. So just uh, moving up with a bullet. We'll and, keep it going. I uh, hope you keep it going. Thank right, you. Uh, right through May. That would be That's fun. That's the plan. Great to see you. Great to have you Thank here you. this Thanks evening. For Thanks for having Thanks very me. much. Appreciate good it. Good luck the rest Thanks of the everybody. way. Coach Jake Oval with us, Baylor Women's Golf. And they are on to the Big 12 championships coming up April 22nd through the 24th. Let's take a break. We'll be back. Wrap things up live from Rudy's right after this.
And back to wrap things up on our Baylor Coaches Show tonight. We appreciate everyone that is with us this evening. Thanks to Coach Joey Scrivano talking Baylor women's tennis and Coach Jay Goble talking Baylor women's golf tonight on the Baylor Coaches Show. Our next show will be two weeks from tomorrow, back to Thursday. It'll be April 28th, and we'll have Glenn Moore with us, Baylor softball coach, and Steve Rodriguez, Baylor's head baseball coach. So that is our next show two weeks from tomorrow. That'll be April 28th. Let's take a look at the upcoming schedule, schedule of events in Baylor Athletics this weekend. It begins uh, tomorrow, really, again, ahead of the Easter Sunday. Baylor baseball opening a three-game series at Baylor Ballpark against the University of Kansas. They'll play Friday, I'm sorry, Thursday at 6.30, Friday at 5.00 and Saturday at noon for the Bears and the Jayhawks at Baylor Ballpark. Baylor Equestrian competing in the NCEA National Championships. This is the uh, national event that has been in Waco for the last 16 years, but has now moved to the World Equestrian Center in Ocala, Florida. And Baylor, the number six seed in the national tournament, will take on number three seed Texas A&M on Thursday at 1.30 Central Time in their first round match. So good luck to uh, Casey Maxwell and Baylor Equestrian. Baylor softball, a couple of home games this weekend against Sam Houston State, Friday at 6.30 and Saturday at 2. And we talked about uh, women's tennis with their regular season finale, senior day matchup with Texas. Baylor number 21 in the nation, Texas number four in the nation. They meet up at 2 p.m. on Saturday at the Herd Tennis Center. So come out and uh, salute our seniors for Baylor women's tennis and uh, send them off into the postseason in style with hopefully a big win over the Texas Longhorns. So that's the upcoming schedule of events in Baylor athletics through the weekend and our next coaches show, which is coming up two weeks from tomorrow with Glenn Moore and Coach Steve Rodriguez. We appreciate you being with us tonight. Thank you very much for that. Thanks to uh, Bob Baker Engineering here. Thanks to uh, Jigger and Thomas. And for now, we say good night from Rudy's. This has been an exclusive presentation from Learfield.